Are you looking for true personal freedom? The freedom to design the life you truly desire? Then you're absolutely in the right place. True personal freedom comes from when you take 100% responsibility and control of your money and your mind. Here, you're going to learn ideas, tips, and wisdom that's gonna help you bridge the gap from where you are now to your dream life in the future. My name is Randy Wilson, and welcome to the Rich Mind Podcast. All right, everyone, welcome back to the Rich Mind Podcast. Coming back today with another collaboration episode with Joel Solomon. We're having such a good time uh, collaborating back and forth, talking about financial freedom, talking about personal freedom, talking about uh, we went through his proprietary five-step stock screen, which was the first five episodes or so in this little uh, collaboration series that we're doing, this financial freedom series. And now we're diving into his nine money rules that millionaires use. And that's what I'm so excited. He's gotten into two or three of them. And as I mentioned, there's nine. And so today we're going to cover another one of those topics today. I'm going to let him introduce it. I'm going to let him explain it. He was telling me a little bit before we hit record. And yeah, this is going to be a lot of fun. So I can't wait. Joel, welcome back to the show. I can't wait to dive into this one. Randy, thanks again so much for having me. It's really, a, truly a pleasure and an honor to be here. And it's, uh, yes, it's been great talking with you about going through the five-step proprietary stock screen, going through some of the other rules. We, we talked about DIY investing, do-it-yourself investing. We talked about the controversial rule, don't diversify. And uh, if you want to see talk, us talk about that, go back to prior episodes. We talked about the most important rule, rule number one, when you believe. And last episode, we talked about trust your intuition. And I'm pretty sure, as I mentioned in the last time we talked, that no financial advisor and no financial planner is going to tell you to trust your intuition. But this former hedge fund manager will. <laughs> Because I know when I trusted my intuition, I either made more money and I didn't lose the money or I, 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 I did really well. So it's important to include that in the decision making process. And I actually have my clients write down the level of belief from one to 10 and the level that their intuitive feeling is from one to 10. And if they're not at least a seven, eight, nine, or ten on the belief scale, at least a seven, eight, nine, or ten on the intuition scale, then then don't invest. You know that you you really need to. Have, and 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 of course, desire plays a part too. Ultimately, you want to have a burning desire to make money and to become financially free. If you don't, well, you probably shouldn't be watching this anyway. But hopefully, you do have a desire to be financially free, to become wealthy. So let's talk about rule number three, which is an unusual one. Can happiness buy you money? Not can money buy you happiness? Can happiness buy you money? So let me tell you a quick story. It was July 1st, 2015. I was on the Metro North train. We were pulling into Harlem 125th Street Station. It was about 7.15 a.m., when I got the news and I was literally, tears were rolling down my cheeks. A stock that we were betting was gonna go down was being acquired for a 30% premium. It was going to be the worst day of my career managing money. And why was I crying? Because I was in pain. I felt like I had let my investors down. I was managing my hedge fund at the time. And I felt like I had let them down. And I remember on the train ride going into Grand Central thinking, should I just give up? I don't know if anyone watching or listening has ever felt that way. When you've been doing something and something really bad happened and you're like, maybe I should just give up. So maybe some of you have felt that way. I decided not to give up. I put on an uplifting song called Ooh Child by the Five Stair Steps. You know, ooh child, things are gonna get easier. Ooh child, things are gonna get brighter. And look, the song didn't make me ecstatic, but it did make me 
stop crying. And I put on a good calm appearance that day for my colleagues because they knew it was going to be the worst day that we were managing the hedge fund that July 1st day. And when I was feeling down throughout the day, I put on another uplifting song and another uplifting song. And, and I went home that night thinking, I feel terrible. <laughs> what can I do to feel better? And over the next days and weeks, I put together a list of quote unquote, happy habits, the things that make me feel good, independent of what's going on in the physical world. Spending time with my daughters, Lauren and Morgan, my company name, Sal or Moore is named after them. Lore for Lauren, Moore for Morgan. You know, at the time they were much younger. They were six and four, seven and five. And so spending time with them, playing games with them, that was fun. Maybe going on vacation with them, reading a book, going for a jog, getting out in nature, writing down, just getting stuff out of my head, writing stuff down, journaling, some people call it, you know, visualizing what I wanted to happen. And, you know, you may want to write down your own list. It could be, you know, spending time with your loved ones, or you may have a dog or cat that creates unconditional love for you, uh, petting them or playing with them. So make, make your own list. And I found that it actually, un, you know, unconditionally made me happy, these things. I didn't have to, I realized that up until that, that point, if I made money at my hedge fund, I was happy. If I lost money, I was sad. And by the way, I didn't make money every day. If I made money 60% of the time, I was really, really happy. But generally, it was about half, half. So imagine living your life half the time unhappy because you're conditionally trying to make money for your investors and, and yourself. And, and that threw you off every day. You know, you're conditionally happy or sad. So that was the first time I realized that I could create my own happiness, independent of what other people said or thought or did, and independent of what my portfolio did. So here's the punchline. In August and September of 2015, I had my best two months managing money relative to the overall stock market index. My fund was up 3%. The market was down nine. We outperformed by 1,200 basis points or 12%. Mm -hmm. And I will tell you to this day, I credit my happy habits. Those two months, I was doing them religiously every day, disciplined, creating more and more, getting more, spending more time on them that helped me make the money. And I wasn't staring at the screen. I actually took, it was the first time in my career managing money. I took two weeks off in August and I didn't look at the screens all day. I spent one day with my daughters uh, at Disney World. I spent another week uh, with a buddy of mine in Croatia and we weren't staying, you know, like he was, he was a mutual fund manager. We weren't staring at the screens all day. We were enjoying ourselves. And, you know, going on vacation, Kent, you know, being by the sea, you know, being with uh, Disney characters that that can make you feel better and, and not focusing on on the volatility of, of the stock market. So so anyway, I would recommend writing down some happy habits that you can do for yourself and, and go to them. So maybe you're feeling worried or scared about your money situation. You know, I know some of you are looking at the stock market every day and not, not being too happy in the month of September. Um, we'll see what happens uh, in October. You know, people worried about real estate property prices, uh, given the high interest rate environment and seeing their peer houses going down, at least in, in my neighborhood, they've gone down the last quarter about nine, 10%. So what can you do to be unconditionally happy? Do, you know, write down some of those things. It, it may be, you know, going for a massage. It may be getting a mani-pedi, you know, but write those things down so you can have that happiness independent of what's going on in the physical world. So how important, and you mentioned this for yourself, but how important is the habit of doing it every day? Yes, every day I, I do. I mean, I go for a jog every day. I, I get the endorphins going. And I do things for myself, and, and I, you know this, Randy, for about two hours every day. 
I'm not saying you need to have a two hour routine, but pick one thing for yourself for self care, at least one thing. And yeah, I do, I do write in the morning for five, I, I time it, I write for five minutes, just getting any of those negative thoughts out into the paper until I'm not perseverating on them. Uh, I visualize that makes me feel good. I think about what I want to happen rather than what I don't want to happen. You know, I'm thinking about that next client I'm helping become financially free or traveling or being in that dream car, or whatever it is. And, you know, doing those things makes me happy. The idea of the belief, right, is part of it as well, which I know that's money rule number one, correct? The, your amount of belief. So if someone is saying or thinking even that, okay, I can go out and make this list and I can get I, the ideas, but how hard or, or do you have any ideas as far as like the belief part of it to get, you know, you do it for, you said you did this for like a couple months before you started to see the fruits of your labor, basically, right? As far as that belief process is very important to that too, as well, right? Absolutely. You have to, you have to believe that this works. If you're skeptical at anything, so I will tell you, I have new clients, when I have new clients come in, I ask them if, if I'm coaching them on stock market investing, I ask them, so what's your belief level from one to 10, 10 is absolute faith, one is massive doubt that you can make 20% a year in the stock market, one to 10, give me a number. Okay. It's 10. Okay. What's your belief level that you can make 50% in the stock market in the next year? Oh, forget it. That would be one person. Then another person may say, I'm a 10. I, I know that can happen. Okay, let's go higher. What's your belief level that you could double your money in the next year? Oh, I'm an absolute 10. Now, that person has a much higher probability of making 100% versus the person who says, there's no way in heck that can ever happen, right? And so it's the same thing here with your happiness habits. If you believe that that can translate into abundance and prosperity in your life, and I tell you it absolutely can and will, but you, I can't translate my belief to you. You have to believe it. Now, I will tell you, though, that the same vibration for happiness, the same frequency and vibration for happiness and joy and passion is the same frequency for gratitude and appreciation and abundance and prosperity. It's all the same vibration. So if you're vibrating down here on sadness, like because you're upset, you just had your worst day managing money as a hedge fund manager, you can't get here from here. You're on the wrong radio station. You're on 92.3 and not 102.7. You can't get there. So what things can you do to increase your frequency to get towards that abundance and prosperity frequency? And I recommend doing these happy habits. Love it. So I've been a journaler for well over a year, probably going on probably close to two or three years. And I, I would say it's a 365 or three, you know, day a year habit, but at the same time, it's, it's, it's a lot. It's generally every day. You mentioned you wrote five hour or five minutes, excuse me, at, at a time during the day. And I find that that exercise has been very helpful for me as well. Getting the, whatever's going on it there, I don't really sit down with an agenda of what I'm going to write. I literally just sit down, I open my journal. And I just kind of let what's flowing in my mind flow through my pen on, on my paper. I try to express my gratitude for the day as much as I possibly can. Grateful for even the things that have happened in the in the day previous or the week previous, but then also maybe looking forward to some positive things coming up, you know, setting that expectation of some positive things going on for my life as well. So I just wanted to reiterate that I try to do this myself and I, I agree hundred percent that it's been that one practice alone has really, really set myself up over time to start experiencing more positive things in my life. Yeah. So Julia Cameron wrote the book called the artist way. And that was the first book. I think it was written 40, 50 years ago that talked about journaling and she's much more adamant about writing three pages every day. And I tried <laughs> and I didn't get to three pages. I could have, it probably would have taken me hours but what I just, so now I just set a time and I'd recommend the same thing to, to viewers or listeners who want to start journaling, start with three or five minutes, start with a baby step. You know, if you want to go more, go more, but it's just getting it out of here onto the paper so that you're not going over and over on it. And, and there'll be thoughts that come up for me that are not the most pleasant thoughts. Like just, I get them on the paper and then I feel like I can deal with them better. 
or not have to deal with them if, if they're just there. So yeah, it's a powerful technique. I agree hundred percent. It's definitely worked for me. I stick with, I've got a smaller journal and I stick with a page a day. That's kind of my goal. And it's a, it's not a eight and a half by 11 sheet. It's, it's smaller anyways. And that's just enough for me. I feel accomplished when I get done, I'm able to get everything out that I want to get out. And it's really just been helpful for me. So yeah, for whatever that's worth for the listeners, just wanted to put my two cents in with that's been an experience and exercise that's really benefited myself for sure. Awesome. So Getting into the step number three or the third money rule. Go ahead and say rule number three here one more time. Happiness buy you money. Not can money buy you happiness. Can happiness buy you money? And it's a rhetorical question from my perspective. If you're ecstatic, you know, 24-7, just watch the money flow. Watch the prosperity and abundance flow because it will. So we see people all the time that seem like they have the, the golden touch, right? Everything they touch turns to gold and they just have everything seems to be going well for them. And a lot of that has to do with what you said about their vibration, their energy, their habits, all of those things add up and stack up together to have them get the results that, that they're looking for in their outside world. And so if you're, if someone is struggling with their outside world, it's turning it back more on the inside, getting in control of their emotions doing some of these habits is what we are talking about today that could potentially get them in that higher vibration, higher emotional state to then start experiencing better things out there in the, in the physical world. Absolutely. And, and so that, that's an important point to make Randy is that to know that you create your emotions, no one else, you get to decide if you're happy or not not the stock market, not the government, not the economy, not your spouse, not your parents, not your children, you get to decide. And it's your choice. And so when you know that, and I, you know, it's been eight years, only eight years, uh, I'm not 20. Uh, so I figured it out a little bit later in life. But it you know, took me to eight years ago to realize, wait a second, I can create my happiness, not be you know, swayed every single day by what the stock market is doing, what my portfolio is doing. Yeah. One word I've learned that has been very impactful for me as I've thought about it and try to implement it in my life is the word responsibility and learning that it's, it means that it, you have the ability to respond. So taking responsibility for your emotions, for the things that are going on in your internal world, will give you the ability to respond to the outside circumstances that you may or not may not be experiencing that you're happy with or not happy with. And you get to choose. That's what, that's what you're saying, Joel, is you get to choose. And taking that back that responsibility, if you're not doing that today, will be a huge first step. And that's where the encouragement of coming up with these, these happy habits, right? Journaling, we've, we've talked about that a little bit in this episode, but there's others as well. You mentioned going for a run, going for a walk hanging out with a pet, hanging out with another family member or something like that, putting yourself in an environment that's going to bring your joy and energy level higher than what it is maybe when you're in that negative state. Yep, absolutely. That's fantastic. So Joel, as always, I appreciate you sharing this wisdom with us, the listeners. Is there anything else you want to use to tie up and put a bow on this one? I think this might be a good place to end for this one today before we move into the next money rule. Create the happy habit, like write down three things right now that can create happiness so that you can go to them. If you're feeling worried about your money situation or something hiccup happens during the day, you can say, okay, I'm going to listen to this song or I'm going to go for a walk or I'm going to do this. So just have it in your back pocket. So, you know, when you're not feeling so great, you can just pull that out and use it. Well, here's something else you can do folks. You can go follow Joel on social media. You can go look at salamore.com. He's mentioned that more than once as far as his website. He has a lot of content, all free for you to use, to listen to, to watch, to observe, to try to get yourself into this positive mental state. All of these habits that he's even talking about, he talks about a lot uh, within his own content as I'm a follower of his and I see it all the time. And so that would be an encouragement I would have of you. He currently has a goal of helping at least, I love that part, at least 100,000 folks become financially free. And you could be one of them. His mindset and his ability to understand complex subjects, right? 
those of us that may or may not have the training when it comes to financial situations, whether it comes to different assets, uh, it's just, it's mind blowing. And so that's where I'm super grateful that he's joined us here on uh, the podcast here with these episodes. So Joel, I appreciate it. We're going to have all the links to getting connected with Joel in the show notes. Go out there and grab his book, The Nine Money Rules Millionaires Use. That would be a simple thing that you could do to start plugging new information into your mind that may be the exact thing you're looking for that could catapult yourself into this new uh, new place in your life. And who knows what that could bring for you, which is super cool to even think about. So Joel, as always, man, I appreciate you being on the show for sure. Thank you, Randy. Appreciate you. Yes. So folks, go out there, have a fantastic day. Work on these happy habits. Go out there. Joel mentioned, write down three things that you could do right now. Take a second when you get done with this episode, write down three things you could do. We've mentioned journaling. We've mentioned hanging out with a pet. You could go for a walk. You could go for a run. You could go get Joel's book and you're, you could go to solomonwar.com and you could start downloading information that you could immediately start putting in into practice and start seeing some positive results in your life. And I encourage you to do that as soon as we get done with this episode. So have a fantastic day. I look forward to coming back with you and, and having you on again, Joel, and we'll, uh, we'll go further into some more of these uh, money rules for sure. So folks, have a fantastic day, and we will talk to you again on the next episode very soon. Bye now. Thank you for joining me on the Rich Mind Podcast. I hope you found a ton of value in this episode. If so, I'd really appreciate a five-star review. And you can also share it with your family and friends. And as my mentor, Jim Roden, shared with me, in order to have more, you must first become more. And in order to become more, you must work harder on yourself than you do on your job. So go out there today and work harder on yourself to become more and build the life of your dreams. Until next time, my friends.